Left Peru and sailed to England alone. There he met the Browns and they took him home. Now a new life has begun. He's Windsor Gardens' favorite son. Cause he always does his best to help everyone. When a problem appears, he never misses a beat. And always finds a way to land on his feet. Has his very own unique point of view. Looks at everything as if it's brand new. He is friendly and polite. And he tries to do things right. But he gets in sticky messes just the same. He's curious and speaks his mind, but trouble's never far behind. It's Paddington Bear, he's one of a kind. I'm Paddington Bear. I haven't seen Paddington this morning. What's he been up to? Don't bother answering. I can see for myself. So can I. Unfortunately, he's discovered a new hobby. These cutouts have been popping up ever since he heard about the Garden Society's topiary competition. Topiary? But that's the art of clipping bushes into fantastic shapes. Not newspapers. I think they're meant to be marmalade sandwiches. Well, I hope he doesn't make sandwiches out of my shrubs. If he hopes to win a contest, he's going to have to learn some new shapes. And, if we're lucky, he'll find someone else's shrubs ah. to practice on. I am fascinated by your new area of interest, Mr. Brown. And I think you'll find this book very helpful. Clippings from my garden. Thank you very much, Mr. Gruber. Look at all the shapes. They'll make a nice change from sandwiches. Uh, <coughs> uh, yes, Mrs. Bird told me about those. I'm sure a look through that will give you plenty of ideas for the competition. Thank you. But a word of warning, Mr. Brown. What is cut off can't be put back. Mr. Brown's going to be surprised when he comes home and finds a peacock in his garden. But where shall I start? Aha! Wow! Huh. Who did that? Of all the nerve! Ooh, there! Is that you? What are you doing? This branch nearly had my eye out! It's topiary, Mr. Curry. It's to do with cutting shrubs. I'm making a peacock. A peacock? Yes. The brown said if I was going to enter the competition, I had to learn a new shape and... A competition, you say? The Portobello Garden Society will pick the winner at the end of the week. The prize is 50 pounds. <gasps> 50 pounds? Hmm. You know, Bear, a bit of topiary in my garden would raise the tone a bit. If you do one for me, I might not report you for nearly poking my eye out. I'd be happy to, Mr. Curry. And mind you don't go clipping one for everyone. I want mine to be exclusive. Oh, I'm sure I can make it look like something that's never been done before. You better start straight away, Bear. This bush definitely looks as though it could do with a trim, Mr. Curry. Just make sure it's finished by the time I get back. After I've got something for my eye, I shall call in at the Garden Society and bring the judges round. The judges? I'd better get started right away. I read in Mr. Groover's book that the general shaping of the bush is the easy part. But the touch-ups are tricky. They weren't joking. Oh, no. I think I'm in trouble again. Mr. Gruber was right. <gasps> what is cut off can't be put back. I hope the book can tell me what to do in a situation like this. Some of the simpler shapes can take as long as 10 years to reach perfection. 
Ten years? Mr. Curry will be back with the judges in ten minutes. I have to think fast. Huh. It's a good thing bears are good at thinking. You'll not be disappointed, I assure you. When you see my topiary, you won't have to look any further for your winner. Paddington, did you know Mr. Curry's entered the competition as well? Yes, Mrs. Bird. I made a peacock for him. A peacock? You mean he's taking credit for your work? I don't really mind. Besides, I did almost poke his eye out. Well, I mind. Come on. Uh-oh. See? Isn't it fantastic? Mm. It certainly is. But tell us, Mr. Curry, how did you shape such a perfect peacock? Patience. Lots and lots of patience. Just a moment. Mr. Curry didn't make that. It was Paddington. Entering someone else's work? This is highly irregular. It isn't the first time something like this has happened. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, taking credit for a young bear's handiwork. But it's my bush. And it's a fake. A fake? What do you mean, a fake? There's some kind of foam in the middle. The branches are stuck in it. It's alive! It's alive! We've seen just about enough. This has been a complete waste of time. Get it off! Get it off! Oh. I'm sorry, Mr. Curry. Topiary isn't supposed to attack people. There you are. Hello. I've got a surprise for you, Paddington. I bought this bush for you to practice on. He's already practiced. Oh, on mine. And he ruined it. You can have this one if you like, Mr. Curry. Well, it's nothing like the original, of course. I could try making you something else, Mr. Curry. A bear would look very nice in your garden. <gasps> a bear? Huh. A bear. Oh, a bear indeed. Oh, you can't trust anyone today. And you leave things outside. And what happens? Oh, it might get my hands. Perhaps not. Mr. Gruber? Uh, no, thank you. But I'm happy to see you relaxing after our latest trip abroad. Bears like boats. Ah, oh, then you'll be interested in our sweep, sir. Oh, don't bother sweeping. I'll be sure to brush the crumbs into the sea. The fish will enjoy them. This sweep is a contest. A contest? What do I have to do? Guess how far the ship will travel by midday today. The person closest to the exact distance wins the jackpot. That's easy. My uncle in Peru taught me how to predict the weather from the smell of the wind. The ship won't travel very far today because of the bad weather. My guess is 25 nautical miles. Are you sure, Mr. Brown? There isn't a cloud in the sky. Storms at sea can come out of nowhere. I learned that when I was a stowaway. Let's not mention stowaways to the captain, shall we? I'll put you down for 25 nautical miles. I think I may have made a wrong guess by mistake, Mr. Gruber. Perhaps it was the salt air mingling with some marmalade from your snack. Everyone seems certain we will travel a great distance today. But don't feel bad. It was only a guess. I will let you enjoy your biscuits alone, Mr. Brown. Now, be careful. Don't stay out in the sun too long. The sun's very hot. I'm starting to get full and sleepy. Where are you, 
Mrs. Brown. Mrs. Brown. I can't see you, and I don't like the look of what I do see. No ordinary dream. That was a nightmare. <gasps> Paddington! Paddington! The nightmare's still happening. Are you watching? Mr. Gruber was right. I spent too much time in the sun. And now I'm seeing ghosts. If anyone can help me, it's the ship's doctor. Gracious, what seems to be the trouble? You look as though you've seen a ghost. I have. Three of them, as a matter of fact. Three? Dear me. Why don't you tell me all about it? <gasps> well, it happened right after I was chased by some biscuits. You were chased by biscuits? That's right. I see. And this happens to you often? Sometimes, depending on how much I've eaten. But it doesn't stop there. Then I saw the Browns and Mrs. Bird, but they're in London. A bird in London? You're sure it wasn't a, a seagull on the railing? Mrs. Bird, a seagull? She wouldn't like to hear that. Uh, start from the beginning. I was sitting on the deck. You were sitting on the deck? In the sun? Yes, I was keeping an eye on the weather. For the sweep. <laughs> it sounds as though you've been hallucinating. What you need is sleep. But the trouble started while I was sleeping. It's a clear case of too much sun making you imagine all sorts of things. <laughs> well, it's happening again. There are the Browns and Mrs. Bird. Oh, my. <laughs> Hi there. Hello. But you said they were in London, didn't you? Ha! Ghosts! Help! No! Wait! Poor Mr. Brown must be very upset. I can't imagine where he's got to. Well, the last I saw of him, he was running around the ship causing a panic. We're terribly sorry for all the trouble. We came on board this morning when the ship stopped for supplies. Now it all makes sense. Henry wanted to surprise Paddington, not scare him. But how was I to know he would think we're ghosts and start a panic? I've looked everywhere for him. I found Paddington's hat. It was near the railing. Near the railing? Oh, no! Maybe he fell overboard. Oh. Overboard? I've given the order to start the search. In all my years at sea, I've never had a man overboard, let alone a bear. But, Captain, I'm not overboard. I'm right here. Paddington! Go! Run, everyone! Hide! It's all right, Mr. Brown. They aren't ghosts. They're real. It's a surprise. You can say that again. Oh, Paddington, why didn't you come out when you heard the alarm? We thought you'd fallen overboard. You did. But no one said anything about a bear overboard until just now. Because we had to stop, the ship is behind schedule. We've only travelled 20 nautical miles and it's already midday. 20, you say? Then I can't believe it. The bears won the ship sweep. I've won the ship sweep? Your guess must be the closest. This better not happen again. Or my suspicions will be aroused, and I might have to clap you in irons. Aye, aye, Captain. I think I know one bear who's going to have a good sleep after his lunch. If you don't mind, Mrs. Bird, I think I may stay awake for the rest of the day. Anything can happen when I fall asleep. Are one Paddington Brown? Mrs. Bird says one is enough. Oh, well, I'm sure she's right. This letter says you've been invited to be part of a live studio audience. 
but it doesn't say anything about you being a bear. Do you have any form of identification? Hmm. I don't think I have any forms, but I have this photograph from my Aunt Lucy. It says, to my dear nephew Paddington. Oh, there's this. It's got my paw mark on it. Mrs. Bird says no one else has one quite like it. I don't suppose anyone would want one either. This is the number of the studio you want. Thank you. And be careful you don't get lost. I've never got lost this quickly before. Maybe the high altitude is making me see things. Are you lost? Very lost, I'm afraid. I'm looking for this studio. Down the hall, second door on the left. But you better hurry, the jam session's about to start. A jam session? It's a good job I brought a marmalade sandwich. I hope we get to see Paddington in one of the live studio audiences. With that hat and duffel coat, he shouldn't be too hard to spot. Wonderful gift. Eh? See? Just like I said. I have a feeling whoever invited Paddington to the television studios is going to wish they hadn't. Who are you? <laughs> uh, yes, as I was saying, uh, our wonderful guest is Paddington Brown of 32 Windsor Gardens. Paddington Brown, Paddington Brown. But you're supposed to be in Studio 6, not Studio 9. I didn't know about the jam session, so I hope a marmalade sandwich will do. <laughs> I'm afraid we can't play this. Play it? My Aunt Lucy taught me never to play with my food. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, and how can I help you? I think I took a wrong turn. Uh, oh, I see what's happened. Uh, you must have thought the six was a nine. I did not. Aunt Lucy also taught me my numbers. <laughs> what I mean is... You're in the wrong studio. Uh, studio 6 is through there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, change the channel. I can't watch this anymore. But this is Studio 8. Well, at least I'm getting warmer. Where's that bear? I have you, Robin Hood. Nothing can save you now. I think you dropped something. <gasps> <gasps> Not save him, Friar Tuck. Friar Tuck? Oh. It's not my place to say, but I've always been told that violence doesn't pay. I can't believe it. That's it. I'm calling the television station. Why don't we watch the news? <laughs> and on the international scene, there have been reports of... ...strange sightings abroad. There's been a new development in the amazing discovery... It's of happened Earth. again! I've tried phoning the station five times, but they're always busy. Oh, dear. I hope people aren't calling to complain about Paddington. 
put your arms together. Uh, what is going on in my studios? Miss Warren, find the audience coordinator and that bear and bring them to my office on the double. I don't believe it. This is Studio Six, but the show's over. There you are. There you are. The chairman would like to see both of you in his office immediately. Oh, no. I think I'm in trouble again. This is very serious. Those programmes were going out live. Everyone in the country must have seen you. You see, I got my sixes and nines mixed up. Yes! I know they're right here. I was just... What? How many? That many? That's incredible! Uh, as I was saying, this is very serious. It turns out everyone in the country did see you. <laughs> they did! They did? And they loved you! Our switchboard has been flooded with calls from happy viewers wondering where and when you'll turn up next. You've done us a great service. Our ratings have soared. Congratulations. Good work. Oh, thank you, sir. You know what they say, there's nothing like live TV. We'll have to have you back, Mr Brown. Perhaps next time I could start at Studio One and work my way up.